The principal unit of an organism is a cell, which combines with others of its kind to form a tissue. An aggregate of tissues is an organ, and an aggregate of organs is an organism. Thus, an organism can be broken down into organs, an organ into tissues, a tissue into cells, and from the latter, one of them can be taken up for study. In a similar fashion, the basic unit of society is a socialized individual, one who has internalized the norms and values, and the ways of meaningful social behavior. A collectivity of individuals is a group, and several of them combine together to form a community. An aggregate of communities is called society. As in the case of organism, a society can be broken down into communities, which in turn can be divided into groups, and groups into individuals. Organic analogy is quite useful as a starting point, but it should not be regarded as an end in itself, for it breaks down at many levels. For instance, a single cell can survive. There are organisms made up of single cells, but no individual can survive alone. The most elemental unit of human society is a dyad, that is, a group of two individuals. Aristotle had said long time back, one who lives alone is either a beast or God. Organic analogy helps us to understand the concepts of society and its structure, but it should not blind us to the specificities of society, not found in other systems of natural and biological world. The Oxford Advanced Learner's Dictionary, 1999, gives three meanings of the term structure. 1. The way in which something is organized, built, or put together for example, the structure of the human body. 2. A particular system, pattern, procedure, or institution, for example, class structure, salary structure. And 3. A thing made up of several parts put together in a particular way, for example, a single story structure. When a sociologist speaks of structure, he has all the three meanings in his mind. By structure, he means an interconnectedness of parts, that is, the parts of a society are not isolated entities, but are brought together in a set of relationships to which the term structure may be used. Everything has a structure. Unless it is there, the entity will not be able to carry out any tasks. It will not be able to work. When its structure breaks down, or is jeopardized, it stops working, becomes inert, thereby affecting the activities of the other systems, because they are all interconnected. Why the parts are connected in particular manner is because of the logical and rational relationship between them. For those who regard structure as an important analytical concept, the world is an organized entity. It comprises interconnected parts where each part is to be studied in relationship with other parts. To sum up, structure refers to the way in which the parts of an entity are interconnected so that the entity emerges as an integrated whole, which for the purpose of analysis can be broken down into individual parts. No dispute exists in sociology with respect to the idea that structure means an interconnectedness of parts, but it exists as to the identity of these parts, whether these parts are individuals, or groups or roles, or institutions, or messages. In other words, the question is, which of these parts should receive our primary attention? Second, a difference of opinion exists whether the structure is an empirical entity, something that can be seen and observed, or is an abstraction, arrived at from the regularity and consistency of human behavior. Around these two ideas are built different theories of social structure. Robert Merton is quite right in saying that the notion of social structure is polyphyletic and polymorphous.